Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Edgar Allan Poe, the writer who first gave fear a face. Dario Argento and George Romero, those twisted minds in horror movies. All three united to make a film that will blow your peace of mind to pieces. He's liquidating a substantial number of his assets here. Perhaps if he'd be willing to wait... He can't and... wait, Mr. Pike. The doctors give him three weeks. It looks like that. Bert, what if he... What if he hears me? I'm sure he can. Valdemar, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Fascinating. Somewhere deep in his consciousness, he knows exactly what we're doing to him. You killed her. And I didn't kill her! Yes, you did. You... It's a fucking cat! Meow! Meow! Two evil eyes. Uh, Robert! Robert! Wake up! Probe into your nightmares. Who was his cousin? You know why he did it? To pull her teeth out. All 32 of them. Drag your anxieties out of their darkest hiding place. He couldn't have been dead. Plunge into panic. Whoever dares challenge the malignant power. You better wake you, Valdemar. Two evil eyes and discover how terrified you are of your own fear. And welcome back. So here we go. You just heard the trailer for it, so let's get into it. It is Two Evil Eyes, disc number 43 in the Italian Collection series. Now, if you were like me and you got right in on that first edition one, you got a lovely little uh, slip case, some lobby cards, some notes in the booklet. I don't think you can get them anymore, I think they are all sold out, so the ones you buy now are of a more standard edition, but to be honest, you should own this in your collection regardless. Um, what to say about this movie? Well, let's start with the, the blurb, as always. Uh, it says, it was the team up of the century in 1990 when the Italian auteur of excess Dario Argento made this double feature compendium creeper with Dawn of the Dead Helmer, George Romero. The results bring us the very best of the United States independent sector with the kingpin of things Jallo, giving us the much loved splatter shocker Two Evil Eyes. The latest in the 88 film's Italian line, Romero's outstanding opening, Salvo, brings us an adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's The Facts in the Case of M. Valdemar. Highlighting the sublime scream queen Adrian Barbeau of the Fog and Swamp Thing fame as a scheming widow seeking to exploit the estate of her terminally ill husband. Little does she know, however, that her husband is already ahead of the curb and planning a little ghoulish vengeance of his own. For Dario Argento's adaptation, The Black Cat, Harvey Keitel of Reservoir Dogs and Taxi Driver fame, essays an eccentric photographer obsessed with death and dismay. Although eventually his livelihood encourages him to embark on the ultimate crime. However, there is a super sick sting in the tail that will leave this hapless cameraman literally hollowed out from head to toe. We dare you to endure the gruesome and gruelling effects of Tom Savini of Day of the Dead fame and the provocative spine-tingling soundtrack of Pino Dinaggio of Body Double fame and this awe-inspiring frightener that is finally available to UK horror buffs in hair-raising HD. 
The special features on this disc is a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, uncompressed original English audio 5.1, uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated English subtitles, double vision, an interview with Kim Newman, Two Evil Eyes, an interview with second unit director Luigi Cosi and cult actress Caroline Munro. Italian opening and closing credits, theatrical trailer and of course a reversible sleeve with alternate Italian poster design. Region locked to region B, I believe this is already out in the States in a 4K master now, I think uh, Blue Underground's put that out and I don't own it yet which means I will have to do it, I hate myself but that's just when my brain works. This is also audio formatted to DTS HD ME stereo, the picture is 1080p HD 1781, 1. the runtime is 2 hours, the language is English and Italian and the subtitles are English. Now, we covered this on Podcast Under the Stairs a long time ago. I want to say our good buddy Richard Glenn Smith of Hello, This Is The Doom Show fame made his way over to chat a little bit about Two Evil Eyes. And to be honest with you, it's a movie that... uh, I've always kind of had a kind of love-hate thing with. Um, This is one that I remember checking out way back in the day from um, VHS rentals. One of those ones where I, I didn't actually quite get it back. Um, when it first came out I thought it was just kind of a bit too cheesy and wasn't quite sure what was going on to be honest with you and then kind of refilmed it when I was working in the video store so that's like early 2000s and then um, you know through my kind of budgeting sort of interest and love of Italian cinema I went back to it several times and each time I go back to it I am kind of shades of the same opinion. I still kind of think that the George A. Romero version, his first one, um, is okay. I think it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's brilliant. I think it's a bit TV movie-esque for my liking. And I think that the Argento one is woefully underrated. I think it's absolutely primo bonkers Argento. um, And quite vicious as well. (laughs) You know, it's a really fucking nasty piece of work. And I was interested to see if sitting down and viewing it this time, I have softened maybe to the the George A. Romero one. And truth be told, I'm still kind of in the same boat that I've been since, since like 2001. Uh, My opinion really hasn't moved that much. I think there's a lot to like about the facts in the case of M. Valdemar. I think there's interesting stuff that Romero is doing. I think the casting is great. Uh, Adrian Barbo is absolutely brilliant in it. But I ultimately come back to this thing where, of course, one, it's zombies because it's Romero, so it has to be zombies. Two, it takes far too long to really get to anything. Um, Three, it kind of feels a little bit like a lesser Father's Day um, from Creepshow. Kind of feels like we could go there, but the Creepshow one is having much more fun and is a bit more tongue-in-cheek than this one. Four, I think the special effects are bitching. I I mean, that's one thing you'll never really get complaints from me on Two Evil Eyes. I know some people aren't necessarily as up on Savini's effects in this one, but I would disagree. I think for the time period, the fact that we're still doing practical effects makes me quite happy. Um, and, And kind of the fourth thing is that I think that the runtime is what kills it. I think this would perfectly work as a half an hour short. I don't think we need all the the kind of expositional stuff that we're getting. I think that we take a very long time to get up to the police involvement at the, the end. One of the cops being played by the fucking delightfully amazing tash wearing Tom motherfucking Atkins. Um, and then we're rushing to the end. We're like, we've got him for a day. Let's film him here. Let's film him here. Uh, it feels a bit weird. I think the the effects, like I said before, are pretty cool. I like the zombie stuff that's going on here. Um, I like some of the gore. It's actually really well done as well. But it's a whole lot of kind of TV movie-esque drama shit going on in the background, which I think slows it down. It's like an anchor on this short most of the way through it. The Dinaggio score is great in this one. I love it. It's creepy and weird. And the idea itself, its premise and its core, this idea of, 
you know, if you are hypnotized and you die whilst under hypnosis, your consciousness still exists even though the body is dead. I think that's brilliant. And this kind of idea of him being used as a vehicle to bring evil things from the other side is really cool as well. I just wish we got more of it. I just wish it wasn't the last 10 minutes of the short. I wish it was like maybe from the halfway mark we really leaned into it and started revving the engine up, but you just don't get that. And as a result, it kind of feels like someone kind of curtain jerking um, for the, the main event here, which really is the Argento Black Cat, which, like I said before, I think is woefully underrated. I, I don't know why people don't lean more into this, especially when we talk about him kind of tipping off the edge of the cliff, kind of circa phenomena a la Creepers, you know, um, or aka Creepers. A lot of people are like, well, that's his last great movie. And then after that, you get little shades here if it's in Trauma or Stendhal or maybe in Sleepless or, you know, um, stuff like that. And I can kind of see where you're coming from. But to me, at a 55 minute length, um, I think his Black Cat's brilliant. I think it brings a lot of stuff out with the original source material. I mean, he is uh, segwaying in a little bit of the Telltale Heart in here. He's bringing in a bit of the Pit and Pendulum in here as well. In a really cool, fun, quirky way. I love how that's done. The kind of Telltale Heart reveal, actually, to give the vehicle for the Black Cat is really well done as well. And I think the Black Cat might be up there as one of the most adapted a uh, poll works. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I'm, I, I'd be confident to say that. I feel like I've seen, especially from like the horror genre of, of of Italian directors, a lot of them took a swing at the Black Cat. So, but I, what I love about like Argento's one is that whilst it is, it still has that very early '90s kind of cinematography, which isn't great. Argento elevates it. Some of the camera shots in it are fucking brilliant. Like these tracking shots, you can tell he's like, right, this is the set piece I want in this this creepy building. Um, the gore effects are brilliant as well. Some of the corpse effects, I love the, the idea that there is some sort of sadistic killer in the background, which the police are just kind of dealing with, and we never really find out who that is, but it's clearly someone malicious enough that they would wedge open a woman's mouth and surgically remove their teeth uh, to contain in a box with their implements. I think that's kind of gnarly. Also the pit and pendulum death is really, really cool. The fact that Harvey Keitel himself uh, has this kind of fever dream of this kind of kind of paganistic era witchcraft ceremony where he himself dies in a manner very very similar to that of the the chicken cannibal holocaust it's kind of fucking gnarly as well and then the hysteria that Kaitel brings into this one i think he is fucking great in this one he is so over the top and so angry and so aggressive and so in your face that it just works um, there is a couple of really, really, really great effects in here, whether it's the cleaver death to um, Kaitel's woman who gets it in the chest and in her hand and that's sliced down. And even though, you know, in high definition you can kind of tell it's a fake arm, the blood pumping out is kind of awesome. Whether it's the, you know, the actual result of the, the nod mutilated body and these feral, blind, fucking hairless kittens who are just being gnawn on this decaying flesh I think is is fucking awesome as well uh, and once again the Dinaggio score works really well it. it's kind of feverous and um, it, it, it kind of adds to the tempo and pace I think overall the biggest crime that Two Evil Eyes has as an, a kind of anthological work you know this idea of two pieces put together is that you know the the first one isn't great and as a result the second one feels maybe better. I think if you took Black Cat independently and put it against Argento's work of the 80s, I think it, it, it's there but it's not of the same standard surely. Um, and I think there's a kind of false equivalence having watched the facts in the case of M. Valdemar that you think that the Argento one is a lot better than it is. And I'm always left with that. I come out going, that's a fucking bitching Argento movie. And then I'll sit and watch Tenebrae, for example, and I'm like, no, this is a fucking bitching movie. Um, Argento's one is just, a, it's just a really good one. It's not a great fucking awesome spectacular piece of Argento's work. 
and it kind of lies back and rests on those laurels. Um, it's it's a strange one overall. I I mean, if you listen to the Kim uh, Newman interview, he hypothesizes that there was maybe other directors involved. Originally, they all kind of pulled out this idea of what they were going to do with it. And he also puts forward an opinion which I don't necessarily think is right per se. He puts it forward that directors love doing anthologies, but audiences don't. And I don't think that's right. If you get me a good anthology, I'm a happy camper. Um, And I do walk into a lot of anthologies fully expecting that not all my tastes will be catered for and we're going to cater for other people's tastes which might not fit with mine. And I don't think that is a bad thing. I think as a sampling plate of horror, anthologies serve up a a worthy purpose. I think what you have with this one is um, the potential to chop maybe even both stories down to uh, maybe a 40 minute each and then fit another one in there. If you sacrificed like 15 to 20 minutes of both these uh, outputs and then gave us another 40 minute one out there with another plot adaptation done by a completely different director of the class of Romero or Argento. Imagine if you got a Stuart Gordon in here. You, you could be dealing with some really cool shit overall and maybe something that stands up a bit better than what you get overall. I think what we ultimately are left with is a flawed but endearing piece of work. I think Romero, even on his off days, still has a lot to say and a lot to do, and I, I like that, and he shows that he really is a good director. I think sometimes we credit him for the 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 subtext in his movies and not necessarily the composition of his movies. And I think even though the, the subtext is not great in the case of M. Valdemar, I think what you can lean back on is he's an accomplished filmmaker and it's there for sure. Likewise, I think that sometimes we sit there and say, well, Argento is only interested in the shots, not about the performances. And then you see one like this, which is an American studio output, which has named actors in it. And the actors are doing great. So whether or not Argento's over there, given Kaitel, you know, kind of lists and lists of notes on his performance I don't think that happened but then you've got Harvey fucking Keitel on on set you don't direct that man just tell him act crazy and run the film so there's that part of it as well in terms of how the Blu-ray looks it looks cool I, I think it looks clean it still has a bit of a grain I'm interested to see what the 4K looks like for this I will be getting that Blue Underground one and I'm interested to see if they really clean it up and make it look something special. Um, As this presentation goes, it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's the best by any stretch of the imagination 88 films have done, but at the same time, I think it's clean by about a million times um, better than the, the kind of VHS that I remember watching back in the day. And it's certainly crisper than the previous release in the UK, which was done by Arrow Video, on DVD, so it's certainly, it's certainly a bit cleaner than that overall. I think when it comes to grading this one, if I was to give a grade to Two Evil Eyes, what I'll do is I'll grade both um, and, and kind of outputs separately and then give it an overall grade. I think the Georgie e. Romero one gets a three for me, so the facts in the case of M. Valdemar is a three out of five. I like it, can't go any further than that one. I think when it comes to the Argento one, I give it, you know, a a kind of 4.5. I really like it, actually. It's it's very close to a love it. I don't think, like I said before, it's not top tier Argento, but in the viewing experience of watching these two together, you get a bit of a boost when the Argento one kicks in. Um, I think if I was purely watching it itself, it'd probably be a 4. Um, but in case of, you know we're doing these two individual outputs as a whole though, uh, which means that you know like a 4.5 for that one, somewhere between a really like it and I love it. And overall, my review for Two Evil Eyes comes in at a four. I really like this title. I think Argento saves it, but at the same time, I have never watched it and disliked the Romero output, and I think that's to its credit. I think it, it always just manages to be a very safe output which maybe allows Argento to be more risky. I, I, I like the idea that, you know, Romero takes the hit and makes something a bit more kind of run-of-the-mill, straight down the line, so Argento can really go fucking bonkers, which he does, and I absolutely love. So there we go, a four out of five for two evil eyes.